As the American population becomes more and more diverse, how can the new Congress represent and stay connected with this ever-changing electorate? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and we're here on location in the U.S. Capitol, and I'm joined by Congressman Michael Honda, Democrat from California. Congressman, welcome to the program. Thank you, Robert. It sounds like and it feels like that the new minority is the new majority, if you know what I mean. Yes, it's uh, becoming more like America. <laughs> Indeed, a melting pot of more and more diverse voices, more and more diverse backgrounds, not only just clearly being on Main Street, but also on Wall Street and also here on Capitol Hill. What does this mean for you and for your colleagues here on the, on the Hill? Well, it means that there's a greater challenge that uh, all our institutions, uh, especially Congress, needs to keep in touch with our, uh, with our electorate, but more broadly with the communities, the different diasporas that exist in this country. How do you do that? Well, you have to pay attention. That's one. You have to be positive and, I guess, affirmative in your action and reaching out and making sure that uh, that's what you're doing. In my campaign, my new district, uh, I use 20 languages in the new area. 20 languages. These right. are, and these are, these are, these are I, I, I don't understand how that can happen. Well, that's the thing is that uh, people don't understand that our communities are made up of all kinds of language groups. We, we spoke for everything from Arabic. Uh, and, um, Spanish, Mandarin, Spanish, you're going down the list. And Chinese, you know, and all the languages that existed. And what we do is look at our, our data and say, who are these folks and where are they from? When you hear and see different diver diverse ethnic groups in your constituency, how does that translate into actual public policy? Well, first thing is, um, it's the consciousness of it. Like last Friday, uh, President Obama had a function recognizing the, the originator, the original um, religious leader of the Sikhs. No one's ever done that. And so to the entire Sikh community and other Indo-American communities, it means that he's paying attention and he wants to pay respect. That converts into um, respect also and then also support. And so I think those kinds of attentions that we pay to our communities pays off in the long run. Would you encourage, Congressman, uh, the various constituency groups out there that come to Washington, D.C., to make sure that not only their voices are heard, but they're actually at the decision table when policy is being debated? That's important. Um, I came here in 2001. For the first eight years, I met with uh, leadership of the community organizations that did health care, and we put together the health gaps and uh, disparities in the health system. When, um, when Obama came to office, we were ready with information, and that was quickly uh, incorporated into the affordable health care. So in other words, I hear you saying, sir, you pretty much did the, did the president's homework. You did all the legwork in the beginning so that when he came to the White House, you pretty much just handed him the blueprint, if you will. Well, he had a blueprint that he gave to us when he ran the first time. And so we worked uh, hand in hand. He was a senator before, and he was a community organizer. So I think that he really understood the things that needed to be done. So I think that there was an, an expectation on his part that we, uh, we produce these kinds of information for him. Was 2012 a fluke in the electoral system where we saw this high watermark of electoral uh, minority voices at the table, or do you think that this is the new normal? It's probably the new norm, um, and, and it's the same thing as a higher uh, watermark that we're gonna go into. And how we continue that is to not lose touch, keep in touch, and continuously to spread that uh, information out to the other communities. We have all kinds of diasporas in this country that we haven't even touched. Even Asian Americans, 51% of them have not been touched by either party. All right, Congressman Mike Honda, Democrat from California, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. And thank of course, you, thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care.